Selling in a seller's market is easy. You post it up and you got 10 offers on day one. But the seller's wave seems to be passing and we're headed straight into a buyer's market. Things for sellers are about to get tough. So let's take a look at some ways that you could still get top dollar for your home even in a buyer's market. What's going on, my beautiful people? My name is Mark Benneke, your Fresno area realtor, and today's video will cover my top six tips to help you sell your home faster and for top dollar, even in a buyer's market. Plus, I may or may not have thrown a couple of extra ones in there for you, so make sure to stick around till the end. The crazy COVID overbidding has finally dried up and the interest rates are still on the rise. That's causing quite a bit of buyers to scatter out of the market. Now, supply is continuing to go up slightly, but demand is decreasing quite a bit. And that is quickly bringing us into a buyer's market. You may have been able to get away with quite a bit of shit a few months ago, but now you actually have to be a little bit more strategic. We just came out of a ridiculous seller's market. I get it. Just a few months ago, we could price it at whatever the hell we wanted. $100 billion. And people would still bid over that. But you have to remember that was a few months ago. Time changes very quickly. The conditions that we're looking at now are much different than the ones that we had back then. Back then as if it was like ages ago. <laughs> it's been 84 years. We have to just accept it and make the best of it. Right now, you need to price your home competitively. As more inventory continues to join the market, your home needs to stand out. We've officially hit about double the inventory that we had just a couple of months ago, which still isn't quite enough. We went from roughly two weeks of inventory to just over a month and a half's worth. Think of your home as a beautiful girl at a beauty pageant full of other beautiful girls. What's gonna make her stand out? For your home, two things, price or value. Now, if you're not wanting to make a ton of repairs or upgrades around your house, then the only thing that it leaves you with is price. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to price your home just to give it away. I want you to price it correctly though in order to be able to draw in eyeballs. Think of it like a pyramid. At the middle of the pyramid, you have market value. And let's just say that there are three subsections both above and below market value. At the very top, you have your home priced at 15% higher than market value. At the very bottom, 15% lower. And then the two in between are going to be 5% and 10% higher and lower. Now, if you price your home right at market value, you have a chance of getting about 50% of the market to actually notice it. The higher you go up, the less eyeballs are going to be on your property. At 15% above, you might get 5 to 10% of buyers to actually notice your property. At 5% above, you might get about 35%. As you adjust 5% down, you'll increase the amount of eyeballs to 65%. 10% down, and you'll be looking at 75 to 80%. And 15%, you'll be looking at 85 to 90%. As you can see, there are definitely diminishing returns either direction. So making sure that you price your home right is crucial for you to be able to sell your home at not only the highest value, but also in good time, which time is also crucial for you to actually be able to get top dollar for it. See, if you price your home too much above market value, what will end up happening is that it'll get no traction. Eventually, you're forced to drop down the price. Now, naturally, you might think that somebody would look at it and think, sweet, looks like they're having a sale on that home. What a fucking bargain. But unfortunately, what actually happens is, hmm, they drop price on it. I wonder what's wrong with it. Typically, the perceived value of your home diminishes instead of it remaining the same and seeming like a great deal. We are very social creatures and like to think of ourselves as very independent. But when it comes to buying shit, we depend on the masses probably a little too much. If there's a lot of attention on something, we begin to wonder what it is about it and want to find out for ourselves. But if there's none, we automatically just assume that it's not worth our time. <laughs> Think of products on Amazon with really high reviews or the massive lines outside of nightclubs. There's a reason why they end up getting more traction and it's usually the social aspect of it. Now, there are drawbacks to pricing too low. Yes, you'll get more traction, but there's a chance that you might anchor buyers at too low of a number where in their head, the house is only worth that amount and they're not willing to pay much more above it. And also they might end up wondering What's wrong with the house that they ended up pricing it for so low? Kind of sounds like we're going back into the whole balance thing, huh? Yep, it's very crucial that you find the sweet spot. You don't want to leave any money on the table. So I would personally say pricing your home 15% above or below, not an option. At this moment, I would say from 2% to a maximum of 10% under is your best bet. Five to 7% is where I would personally list my own home at. It gives you a ton of traction on your home, nearly two thirds of the entire market. And it also doesn't give the impression that there's something wrong with your house. We'll couple this with a tip from later. As more traction comes on board, we increase the likelihood of getting offers in. As you get more offers, you get leverage. And leverage is what allows you to be able to get top 
$50. You can let potential buyers know that you already have multiple offers in and increase the likelihood of creating a bidding war. Have you ever been to an auction? I go every week and I can tell you people go nuts when they know that they're competing against someone else. This alone can drive your home back up to market value and even past it. At the end of the day, remember that people are very scared of the coming months. If you focus too much on getting the highest price, you'll actually lose out on a lot of money. There could potentially be a small drop in prices in the coming months. So selling quickly could allow you to take advantage of the current high prices that we have and avoid the uncertainty that lays ahead. Tip number two, over or under upgrading. So your home is getting prepared for the beauty pageant, right? She's gotta get her makeup dialed in just right. No makeup, and she might still be beautiful to some. I'm actually part of that some, because personally, I feel like women are gorgeous without makeup, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> now, if she applies too much makeup, then you overspent and wasted a lot on products. And not many people will appreciate the extra layers to give you more points. So again, you gotta find that balance and upgrade just right. First place that you gotta focus your attention, the kitchen. If your kitchen looks dated, then people will just automatically make assumptions about the rest of your home. And also typically when somebody walks in, the kitchen is usually what greets us. That initial high perceived value that they had all of a sudden gets pegged down. Good luck getting as much as you would've wanted. But when they walk in and see fancy stainless steel appliances and quartz countertops, mm, they start assuming that everything else in the home is top notch. My suggestion here, again, if you're up for investing in your home and it makes sense, paint your cabinets and put on some new handles. Replace the countertops to quartz or granite. Repaint the walls and always go neutral. Bold colors may look good to you, but you have to remember that this isn't about you. It's about the potential buyers. Neutral colors will appeal to more buyers. Besides, if they prefer more bold colors, they can always go in and repaint themselves. Second area to focus your attention, the bathrooms. If you've got an old tub or your vanity's just looking ragged, remodeling a bathroom does wonders. The tile showers or the pre-made vanities can really make the bathroom just and take it a step further and get yourself a shower tower. If you've never heard of these, check them out. They're so cool. And they're only a few bucks more than regular shower fixtures and they make the entire shower look so much more appealing. Other than the heavy focus on those two areas, just go around and repair the nicks that you find around the house. Replace the old door handles, fix the leaky faucets, clean the grout, or maybe grease up those sliding doors. Repaint the entire interior of the house a neutral color. Make sure to clean or maybe just flat out replace the curtains. And you don't necessarily have to repaint the outside of the house. Get a power washer and just go through and power wash the outside of your home. But always start with the kitchen, and the bathrooms. Now I know we talked a lot about the interior, but don't think that that means that I'm actually giving you the means to skimp out on the exterior because first impressions matter. The halo effect, which you might have heard of as confirmation bias. From the very beginning of this video, you got an impression of me. It was most likely a good enough impression that kept you watching this long. Chances are, you'll probably keep watching. Unless now I made you aware of that and then you're like, you know what, F you. I'm not gonna watch it just because of that. <laughs> the reason this happens is because once you created that good impression of me, it's very hard to take yourself away from the fact that you think that I'm a good person or somebody that you would like. For the ones that started watching and then stopped, likely they had a bad impression of me. And now if you guys were to try to convince them that their impression of me is wrong, wrong it'd be pretty fucking hard. I'd argue almost impossible. And the same thing happens with your home. What do you think the first impression of your home is? I highly doubt it'll actually be when they first pull up to your home. Nah. See, most people nowadays are starting their journey online. They'll likely take a look at a website and narrow down their search based off of price and area. And then they'll start looking at all of the results. Guess which ones they're most likely to click on? That's right, the ones with really sexy mm. pictures. But it doesn't stop there. Once they click on your listing, they'll want to look at the entire layout of your house. And if yours has a 3D design that they can mess around with, it'll keep them more engaged. But what I've personally found is that video has the biggest impact. It gives people the impression that they're actually able to see the true condition of the house. Because, well, let's face it, we've all taken a look at those gorgeous pictures and actually showed up and realized what? it looks nothing like the pictures. What the video gives them a better understanding of the entire layout of your home, as well as makes them feel as if they're actually there taking it all in. Engagement is way higher with video. Now remember how I mentioned that you don't have my permission to skimp out on the exterior? That's because after you've wooed them in online with those sexy pictures and the 3D layout and the video footage, they'll want to see it in person. And when they finally pull up to the house, 
the very first thing they're gonna see is the exterior. It's crucial to make them feel warm, welcome, and safe when they take in your home for the first time. Getting some minor landscaping done to brighten things up can do wonders for your home. Some affordable shrubs or some bright flowers. Maybe laying down a little bit of turf over that old brown dead grass. Also, please, please, please make sure that you do not leave those old junk cars just laying in the driveway that you've been meaning to fix up for the past five years. Please don't fucking do this. Like you have no idea how frustrating this shit is, and yes, it does happen. Either put that thing in the garage, or just accept the fact that it's been five years and you're not gonna be fixing it. Just take it to the junkyard. <laughs> Once they get past that shit car in the driveway and go into your home, they're gonna smell something. You wanna make sure that that smell is nice. I'm not saying swarm the place with air fresheners, but maybe a subtle air freshener in strategic locations that smells like apple pie or cookies. Mm apple pie. And if you really want to make sure your home stands out, consider leaving them a plate of cookies with a note thanking them for coming by. People eat that sh up, like literally. <laughs> all of these things together will make them feel as if they love the home already. Remember that first impression and it'll be much harder to change that perception. So in case there are little nicks on certain walls, they're going to be a lot more forgiving about it and ultimately convince themselves that any small issues that they come across have a solution. Number four, Make the home bigger. All right, so the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to start breaking down all of the exterior walls on the back of your home. And we're gonna be extending your home as much as we can to the very edge of the fence of your neighbor. And then if you can, just knock their fence down and just keep going anyway. Take up their space. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Unless of course you want to, in which case then I'm not kidding. <laughs> so fucking stupid. All right, listen, the two easiest ways that you could do this. First, getting rid of all of the furniture that's actually taking up a bunch of the space in the home. Things like the extra tables or nightstands or unnecessary bookshelves, the extra couches that have been sitting there that nobody uses. All of that shit is just taking up a bunch of room that makes all of the rooms seem so much smaller. Maybe for a 3,000 square foot home or bigger, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. But for anything under 2,000 square feet, you need all the space that you can get. I'm not telling you to take all of the stuff out though. Leave just enough to be able to paint a picture in their mind of what that room could be used for. In case you didn't know this, most people have a very hard time visualizing the end results of things. So leaving the essentials in a room can really help a buyer see what the room could be used for. And if you wanted to take it a step further, you could actually hire a home stager to come out and rearrange the stuff around your house to get you the best possible use out of it and also tell you what should stay and what should go. As part of this, you should also show off any additional storage that your home has. People love to cling to things from the past. And you better believe that as they're looking around, they're gonna be wondering which areas they can actually put all of their extra in. So make sure to take out most of your stuff from the closets or the cabinets. Really allow them to be able to see that all of the they can fit in there. Maybe even consider installing storage racks in the closets or the entryway or the garage. Now, the second thing you can do, make that baby Right. Lighting makes a massive difference when someone is walking through your home. Dark spaces feel small and unwelcoming. Bright spaces do the exact opposite. Many of us actually take out light bulbs from around our house to save a little bit of energy. Or maybe that's just me. <laughs> but if you do too, make sure to pop them all back in. Make sure that you replace any dim ones with brand new ones. And if your room doesn't have fixed overhead lights, then make sure you go out and get yourself some lamps. Place them everywhere and really brighten that room up. Well, not just the room, the entire house. On top of opening up all of the curtains to allow natural light to come in. This is an extremely inexpensive way to make your entire home look so much bigger and more appealing. It's all about just painting a picture in their mind, remember? And in order to paint a good picture, you gotta take yourself out of it. I know, we love looking at ourselves. How could we not? We're beautiful, narcissistic creatures. Or maybe it's just me. Thank you, I think I look good too. <laughs> But we have to remember that other people may not want to look at us too, especially when it comes to walking through our home. See, what they want to do is visualize themselves in the house, not you. That picture of you angling that big ass fish that you're so proud of, yeah, they don't give a f Your wedding? Little Johnny's birthday party. Sorry, it's gotta go. Pictures are definitely a no-go. All of them need to be removed and stored away. When somebody walks through the home and sees pictures in there, they're just gonna end up feeling as if they're intruding in your space. You don't want that. Remember, you want them feeling comfortable and safe. You want them to feel as if this could be their own home. So memorabilia, personal keepsakes, anything that is not neutral or common within a house needs to go. However, if you have universal decorations, they can stay. Mirrors, plants, books, clocks, 
Things like that are very good to have in the house, especially mirrors, because remember, we like looking at ourselves. But the rest of the stuff, you can't afford to break the illusion they have. It needs to be constant and ready, just like you. Number six, be ready to leave at a moment's notice. You've priced your home competitively. You took some sexy pictures of it and videos. It's getting a lot of traction online. You've cleaned up the outside and spruced up the interior. You took out all the unnecessary furniture, brightened the place up, and took out all of your personal shit. Now you've got tons of traction and everyone wants to come see it. So be ready to show off the goods. <laughs> You should already know that selling a home can be sometimes uncomfortable and also inconvenient. Some people might want to come really early and others really late. And for a short period of time, you need to be able to accommodate them because you want them to come in person and take in all of the beauty that your home has to offer. Baby. And well, you want them writing offers too. So understand that for a very short period of time, you're going to need to sacrifice a little bit of your comfort. Trust me, it'll be worth it. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee. And you know what else is always worth it? Being kind to others in this world. Consider writing a gratitude letter for someone at a business that you frequent. See how grateful they'll be of you moving forward. And while you're at it, if you've enjoyed my content so far, please consider being kind to me by dropping me a, a thank you in advance. But we're still not done, so let's take this a step further. Just as you should be at the ready, so should your home. Always make sure that it's presentable. Keep it clean. Don't leave dishes in the sink or underwear on the floor. Yeah, that happens. Don't leave dust all over the place or toothpaste on the sink. Make your bed. You know, just tidy up. Keep it pretty. And keep the puppies and kitties away. I love dogs. Like, I love dogs. I currently have three of my own and plan on getting a few more. But I've come to realize that not everybody does. Just because we may have a soft spot for them doesn't mean that everybody else will. And remember, as hard as it might be, it's not about us. Hold up. Wait a minute. Put the dog bowls away, the litter box, make sure it's gone. And all their toys, just put them away. I know that this one's a little bit hard, but try to make sure that you get as much of the pet hair out of the furniture. And then take them with you if it's possible. Or at least keep them in a crate in a space where they might not be as visible. I know, it sucks. I hate crating my puppies too. Small sacrifices though, right? I really hope that you found these tips helpful so far. And if you have, I ask one favor of you. If you happen to know anyone in the Fresno area who needs help either buying or selling their home, I'm never too busy for your referrals. And speaking of referrals, I'm actually part of a network that can help you find a realtor close to your home that can align with your values. So make sure to hit me up if you need help with that. Now that you know how to set up your home for success in a buyer's market, you'll need to know how to sift through the tons of offers that are just gonna be pouring in. So make sure to check out this video down here to learn all about how to decode offers. Thanks, and I'll see you there. Okay, bye.